So what does that mean? So naturally that means you need to spend time together, right? Because if you're not going to spend time together, then, then, then you're probably not going to spend much time talking to one another. So you need to make sure that you're spending time with one another and, you spend, and when you spend time with one another, that you're talking with one another. And, and this, this sermon is not about dating, but for those of you that are dating, you know, you need to talk to one another. You need to discuss things and talk to, talk to each other so that you know that you're both on the same page and that you know what to expect when uh, you get married. So a couple of things I've got here. So it naturally means that you need to spend time together. So for, for especially even, and it, and it does apply to wives as well, um, but I, I think more so this is one for the husbands. You know, don't work too much that you neglect your family. Okay, don't, don't work so much, because sometimes as, as husbands, you know, you, you get so wrapped up with work that you come home, you still want to work, right? And even for myself, like I've got work and then now I've got a laptop, I can work from home, you know, and then I've got things to work on at church. And I constantly have to remind myself, don't, I, I have to not spend so much time working that my family is neglected, my relationship with my wife is neglected, that I'm not, you know, my mind is at work, my mind is on church, that when I'm eating with my family, that I'm spending time with my wife, my mind needs to be on my wife. My mind needs to be on my children so that I spend that time and we communicate and we talk. Otherwise, you know, especially when you're married, you know, when you're dating, you know, you want to spend time with them. You know, that's, you, you know you've, got, you've got the honeymoon period and, you know, the, your, your partner is like the focal point of everything you do when you're there. But when you get married, it's not the same. You know, the excitement goes. You know, now, you know, now maybe, you know, your, your, your job or your career is more exciting than your relationship with your wife. So that's why I say not just open communication, but proactive communication, because you need to keep on top of it. It's not going to automatically happen. You need to make sure that that communication keeps happening and, and be proactive about it um, and not let it slip. So don't work too much and neglect your family. Um, you know, uh, moms and wives, don't give all your attention to your kids and neglect your husband, because that can happen too. You know, just like a husband puts too much time into his work, with wives it can happen the same, where, you know, they get this sort of self-righteousness, like, oh, you know, I, you know my kids are my first priority, I've got to do all this stuff with my kids, and then you neglect your relationship with your husband. So don't let that happen either. You know, don't spend hours talking to family and friends and not your husband or wife. You know, especially for ladies that like to chit-chat on the phone, chit-chat on Facebook, chit-chat, and there's nothing wrong with these things, right? Chit-chatting on text message or whatever. But, you know, just think about how much time you spend talking with friends and with family and how much time you spend talking to your husband or your wife. Because what relationship is more important? The relationship with your husband and wife is more important. So shouldn't you be investing more time talking with your husband and wife, chit-chatting with your husband and wife? You know, hopefully your relationship gets to the point where your husband or wife is the person that you want to spend hours chit-chatting with. You know, you want, you've, you've got a relationship with this friend or with this family member where you want to spend hours on the phone chit-chatting and talking and talking about things. That's the sort of relationship you want to develop with your husband or your wife. You not only want them to be your love partner, you know, your physical partner, but also your best friend. You know, so that you're, the, you're talking with them the most and then that relationship is put at the forefront. And you know, men, you have to keep this in mind with ladies, that they're going to want to chat. You know, like ladies, they want to chit chat and spend hours talking and chit chatting. You know, my wife especially is like that. You know, like it, it's like sometimes she's in the mood to talk and sometimes she isn't. But it seems like, you know, when, when I'm tired and I want to go to bed, that's when she wants to, you know, chit chat and, you know, stay up talking. And, you know, I'll stay up and talk, you know, because I, you know, I, I enjoy the fact that she, she's wanting to talk about things and express things because during the day, you know, she's very busy. She's busy with the kids. Her mind is focused on that. But sometimes when she winds down for bed, that's when she wants to chit-chat about things. She wants to talk about this person or that person and talk about this thing that happened or this thing she read on the internet. And, and I, I want her, you know, I don't want to just say, you know, just write it off because she may, she may not be like that the next time. Do you know what I mean? Like, that may be the chance you get. It's kind of like with soul winning, right? That's the chance that you get that they're willing to talk, they're willing to open up. So take that opportunity to, to um, embrace that, you know, and, and talk about it. And then the next time she wants to talk about things, she'll be more comfortable. So it's, it's, it's a constant uphill climb that if you allow, if you give them some, some rope, they'll keep climbing up. 
<clears throat> Another one, you know, schedule time in. You know, whether it's time to spend with your, your wife or your husband, time to spend with your kids, I think it's a wise thing to actually schedule that time in. Why? Because it makes sure it's prioritized. You know, that's why we, we believe in scheduled, organized soul winning. Because if you just go soul winning whenever you feel like it, you probably won't go. And you probably won't go for a decent amount of time, right? If you're not saying, okay, for this two hours, I'm going soul winning. You know, because you just say, well, I'll just go until I feel like it. Maybe after 45 minutes, you'll be like, oh, I feel like I've done enough soul winning. So schedule some time in. And I think it's the same with kids. And I think I definitely have slipped in this area where I should, you know, I should schedule time in to play with my kids. And I found actually in my own experience, when I have set aside, say half an hour to play with my kids, one hour to play with my kids, your kids are fine when they stop playing with you. It, it, I don't know if you've experienced this, Kevin, but it, it's almost like you know, your kids will want to play with you. And if you say to your kids, all right, I'm going to play with you for the next one hour. You know, and I'm just gonna, you're going to be my attention. I'm going to play with you. When that one hour is up, it seems like they're, if they understood that you've given them this one hour to play with them and the one hour is over, it's like they're fine with that because it's like they, they, you've given them what you've promised them, which is one hour. And then when you say, okay, I've got to do some work now. I'll go play with the other kids. They're happy to do that. Whereas if you don't schedule that time and you just give them a little bit here and there and there's no real set structure, they'll constantly be coming to you. Dad, play with me. Dad, play with me. Do this. But if you set that time aside, it's almost like you fulfill that obligation and now you can just focus on work or focus on what you need to do. Um, well, that's just been my experience. Oh, okay, what am I up to here? You know, take the family out. You know, so talking about scheduling time, you know, take the family out, go have some fun. You know, I personally, I personally don't like going out with, you know, work colleagues or going out with even people from church without my family. Right, because there's already so little time as there is in the week. You know, 40 hours a week is gone, or no, more than that if you include travel time to work. You know, you get home and then you've got things to do, especially if you have kids, right? You come home, you've got things to do. You've got to get the kids to sleep, you've got to get them fed, you've got to have dinner. And then, you know, especially for those of us like, like us who have church, you know, Sunday is taken up, right? Sunday's taken up with Sunday morning, then we got the lunch, then we got soul winning afterwards. And then really, you've only got Saturday. So, me personally, I'm not going to spend a Saturday with work colleagues. You know, I'm not going to spend a Saturday going out with work colleagues or going out with friends and family without my family. So that's why if there's a work function on or anything like that on a Friday night or a Saturday night and family is not welcome to come along, I just don't go. Because I spend enough time as it is with work colleagues. I spend enough time as it, as it is at work. I'm not going to give them time that I could give at least having my family there you know, um, you know to, to somebody else. And this is why in this church, I don't like having events that are just for singles, just for males, just for females, because I want you to spend time with your family. And if we're going to do things as a church, we're going to do it with your family then, right? Because I'm not going to take away time from your family to spend with people from church because your family is more important than that. So that I think is a healthy compromise that if we do things as a church, we always do something where the whole family can come and everybody is there because we, we, we only have so much time in our life. So, um, and, and, and you know, week after week, you keep doing things without your family, you know, months go past and you haven't done anything with your family. So uh, this is why I do things the way I do. So I personally, you know, I don't, you know, uh, like, like for example, if, if the Christmas party at work was outside of work hours, I, I, I wouldn't go if my, family, if, my, if my work didn't let my family go. But at my work, the Christmas party is during work hours. So I think on a certain day, you know, everyone leaves work at lunchtime and then it's till five and then you can choose if you stay or one. So I'm going anyway because they're paying for me for that time um, to, to be there to work. <coughs> Um, bedtime talks. I already talked about that. Um, you know, having that bedtime talk. You know, when I think about bedtime talk, it reminds me of, you know, that I don't know if it was like that for you guys, but when you went over to a friend's house for a sleepover, and you know, you're, you're trying to go to sleep and the lights are off, but then you're still talking, and then, have you ever had that experience that you guys have <laughs> that sleepover? And you're, you're talking in the dark and then you kind of think, okay, should I, I want to say something, but I know if I say something, they're going to keep saying something and we're going to keep talking and, and we're not going to go to sleep. 
But I think that's good in a marriage. You know, you have that talk where the lights are off and you're still talking and you're so tired but you're still talking. Oh, I, I enjoy that with my wife. So the bedtime talk. And sometimes that's a good time to talk to because the children are asleep and you can have that time to talk about things, you know, discuss how the day went um, and just to finish things off before you go to bed. <coughs> and, you know, if you, spend, you see, if you spend time talking to one another, you know, you don't need to have these special dates away from the children to discuss serious topics. You know, I know couples that, you know, they have to, you know, you, you know put their kids, you give their, put their kids with a babysitter. And just be careful who babysits your kids, by the way. You know, I've been watching these videos online about these, peop these babysitters that are like molesting all these children and everything like that. So, you know, even more so, this is a reason why to homeschool. And I'm not going to go into this topic, but I'm just saying, just be careful, you know. Just don't, just don't leave your kids with just anybody, right? Because, um... <clears throat> but, you know, if, if you talk to each other and you spend time talking with one another and talk about the serious things, you know, you don't need to set this time aside to go on a special date away from the kids just to talk about serious things, right? Because you're always in the loop. There's not this, you know, if you're talking to each other, there, there aren't these things just bottling up over months and months and months and months and now we have to have this intervention, you know, we can go out on a date and, you know, now we're going we're gonna to tackle this thing. And, you know, sometimes in a relationship it does get to that point. You may need to tackle it. Right? But I'm just saying, if ideally, if you're talking with one another and you have this open communication, all this pent up emotion and discussion is not going to get all bottled up where one day it all has to come out at once and may come out the wrong way, right? Because all these emotions are pent up. So that means, you know, when you talk to one another, I think it's a good idea that you teach your children to respect when adults are talking. You know, because sometimes children will just sit there and if you guys are doing this, you need to stop. <laughs> but, you know, children will sometimes just sit at the dinner table and just make silly noises, right? And just like playing with their bowl, making loud noises, going blah, 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 and singing and things like that. And, I, and there's no problem with kids being kids. But I think also you have to teach children that if there's a discussion over the dinner table, if people are talking, they need to be quiet. And unless they're taking part in that conversation, they need to respect that a conversation is taking place. And if you teach your children to do that, then you can have a conversation over the dinner table. You know, you can talk to your wife about serious things. You can talk to her about things that you need to discuss and you don't need to just, you know, oh, get away from the kids and go on this holiday retreat just to talk about serious things. Because you've trained and you've taught your kids to be quiet when adults are talking and things are going on. And even more so, you can include them in the conversation. You know, when your children are older, you know, you can discuss things with your wife and, you know, include your children in the conversation. Don't have all the serious talks and all the important discussions away from your children because they're, you know, and obviously there are things that probably are, you may feel are appropriate or inappropriate for children. But in my family, I include my children, you know, in, in a lot of the things. You know, and as they get older, I will include them even more so because I want them to know the real life issues that happen in life.